So good afternoon to everyone. Thank you very much for being here. I know that it's still late and after two long days, I know that we all are tired, but I will try to motivate you uh, to this project. So it is the financial literacy in Portugal, state of the art and gap analysis. So this is another European project. And uh, the, this, this project, uh, project is being developed by me, by my colleague, Paula Pérez, the one that presented the, the, the paper before, and another colleague, uh, uh, Luciano Oliveira. So this is the partner, Portuguese partner. So, okay, this is a brief summary of my presentation. So I, I will try to contextualize uh, the project also address you uh, some words about financial education and then talk about the project, the aims, the objectives and the results uh, obtained so far. So in a context that we can describe with an economic turbulence, with a market shortcoming, an escalating number of low income and uh, uh, an increasing number of unemployed people, mostly young adults, um, and we know that these young adults are the largest, largest disadvantaged group in the EU society, we realize that there is a great need to equip, equip those young adults with the tools and skills to manage uh, their income in a way that they will sustain uh, their quality of life and financial uh, flexibility at decent levels in the long term. So taking into account this context, we decided to um, develop a project with the aim to address precisely these, uh, these skills. And the project is the IFINLIT project. So what is financial education? Financial education is not talking about finances for experts, but it is what we do in our everyday life. So we need to be um, equipped with the necessary knowledge and skills to be able to choose the best uh, uh, bank to deal with our credit cards, with our debit cards, with all, all the propositions that uh, the market and the consumerism society uh, is addressing to us. So we need to be prepared to do that and even to manage our family budget and to know how to um, teach our kids also to be uh, aware of all the dangers of advertisement and so on. So financial uh, education is uh, to improve the understanding of people about financial products and concepts but also to develop skills and confidence, to become more aware of financial risks and opportunities, and also to make more informed choices, uh, to know where to go for help, and to take other effective actions to improve our um, financial well-being and protection. So being uh, financially uh, literate is a person that will have some basic knowledge of, of key financial concepts and the abil ability to apply numeracy skills in financial education. So this is precisely what this project aims, to try to help citizens to develop these skills. So the aim or the target is uh, people with low level education or some education, but citizens in general, not addressing uh, experts. So these are the aims of the project, so identify and address specific needs of European citizens in financial literacy, use the technology tools and digital literacy to improve the citizens' competences in dealing with financial issues, develop a partnership model of a wide range of experts organizations, address the challenges of financial management, and also meet the basic objectives of the EU 2020 strategy. These are the partners, so we have partners from Portugal. Portugal is the coordinator of this project. 
we have two partners from Cyprus, one from Italy, one from Austria, from Slovenia, Slovakia, and Spain. What, uh, what are the outputs or what the activities that we are developing? So uh, we have already carried out a transnational state-of-the-art and gap analysis. Um, we will develop or we are developing an online curriculum. It is composed of eight modules and we ha you have here the, the, the titles of those modules and you may ask how did you find those uh, modules? So this is already the third project about financial literacy and these models were identified in a previous project. So th this is a going on, uh, th so this, this happened uh, in the pre previous project. So we will develop um, an online platform and also a mobile uh, application. So this will be an e-learning course totally free that uh, any citizen can um, have access to. Um, and we will also develop an adaptation toolkit. So if there are some trainers that would like to use this course in a more traditional environment, they can also uh, use the course. So we will develop this adaptation toolkit. So what are the results of the state of the art? So our first task in this project was to see what was going on uh, in the partner country. So for that, we did uh, research in several steps. The first one um, was uh, using a desk, uh, desk research, so to, uh, to find uh, information in databases uh, and also what's going on in the, in, the, in the country. We also developed a questionnaire that we administer to all potential targets and other kinds of stakeholders, and then we did a focus group. So you can see there, uh, so in order to accomplish this objective, we developed a questionnaire, and you have here some of the questions that were in this questionnaire. So we asked some demographic questions. We also asked about problems and the contingencies uh, um, the target faced or is facing on their financial education the perception of the importance of development of qualifications and competences to better deal with financial problems, the strategies and the educative formats related with finances, and the most important characteristics or facilities that they believe should be incorporated in these online courses. Because, uh, as I already told you, we are going to develop these courses and we wanted to know what is the best, what are they looking for. In Portugal, we collected 76 answers and the uh, majority from uh, citizens between 21 and 40 years old, and uh, they were all employed. So here you have the, the first results. So according to these um, 76 answers, the main problems and contingencies identified in the field of financial education is about savings and also consumer rights. Uh, indebtedness is there, but is not as much important as savings and consumer rights. And I asked the Association of Consumers, Portuguese Association of Consumers, why indebtedness is not being so important as it was five years ago. And they, they told me that, uh, uh, okay, five years ago it was really important because all families, or a, a, an interesting number of families were facing this problem and they try to solve the problem. But now they realize that they should go before they, 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 are, they face this problem. So they should be taught or they should learn how to deal with the problem before they are in the problem. So they prefer to start with the kids, with the teenagers, uh, instead of uh, trying to solve the problems of the parents. So savings and consumer rights uh, the, 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 the main problems they identify. Okay, uh, so we are developing an online platform, so we want to know if you would like to attain uh, a, such a course, what is the format that you would prefer? Do you want a face-to-face -face, uh, class, or do you prefer an online class, e-learning, or be-learning? And uh, most of them say they prefer e-learning, not e-learning, pure e-learning, but they uh, want something blended. They want some face-to-face uh, -face, uh, sessions. 
um, and do you have internet or do you have a smartphone or a tablet or whatever? Do you have, can you have, uh, follow this course online? We wanted to know since we are developing the, the platform. And of course, most of them, the majority of them have internet access, so there's no problem. Um, they also have a smartphone and there's no problem with internet access. So we can go and develop uh, the course online. What are the characteristics or facilities of online courses? Uh, what uh, should be our concern? So according to the answers, uh, we should pay attention to the quality of contents. I think this is um, normal, okay? But also uh, pay attention to the time to load pages and contents so they do not like to wait. And this is related with usability. It's normal as well. Uh, easy to read texts and also easy to use. So they do not want nothing very complicated. So we need to develop all the materials uh, should follow these uh, guidelines. So after the questionnaire, we also interviewed some um, experts and also some students because we wanted to go, go deeper in some of these questions. And this is the final SWOT analysis that results from the desk research uh, literature review, the questionnaire, and the focus group. So I know that you are not going to read everything. You have this in the paper. Just to draw your attention for the strengths is the na National Plan of Financial Literacy in Portugal. There is already a National Plan of Financial Literacy. So our National Bank woke up five years ago and they realized, okay, maybe now it is too late for those that have already the problem, but we need to try to prevent future problems. So they developed that. They did also a national survey about, about financial literacy. So some activities, some ac initiatives are already going on. So there are different players in this area. Citizens are aware of the need to be financially uh, literate. Uh, there are some projects to develop didactic materials. There is a massive training. A massive training can be implemented through online courses and the cost of online training uh, is lower than the face-to-face -face course. Weaknesses, it's values and ethics. And uh, in one of previous projects, there we realized that uh, there was the, the, front, the, the border between what a bank can offer and what information or training a bank can also offer is very blurred. So one, in one hand, the banks are offering credit cards, debit cards, and in the other hand, they are offering um, financial literacy programs. Uh, how can they deal with this? So this is not very clear where you understand what I mean, okay? So lack of transparency and conflict of interests, different audience profiles, and so on. So there is here a lot of opportunities for this kind of uh, training, but of course, some threats that are related with lack of habits of lifelong learning, uh, the crisis, lack of experience and trust in distance learning. So we are still doing uh, small steps in this area. What are we doing now? We are preparing the contents for the curriculum following the guidelines of P-Learning. The curriculum should be concluded, the first draft version, uh, now in October. Uh, and uh, Portugal is developing the module of uh, basic math. This is just for you to have a glimpse of uh, what it is, this uh, uh, module. So we. We had a template that all uh, partners are using. We also took uh, uh, paid attention to the pedagogical structure. It will be uh, divided in the basic level and advanced level. In total, it will have four units. The basic level will be translated in all uh, partner countries, uh, partner languages. The advanced level will be only in English because we think advanced level can be also for uh, citizens that are that know a little bit of English at least, so, but the basic will be in all partner uh, languages. It will be step by step to teach and we will have some videos. 
I don't know if this one, just to show you 30 seconds of the video. This was uh, done by us. Uh, so how to multiply. Do you know this way of multiplying? I, I didn't learn this way when I was a kid. So I, I learned to multiply again with this course. You can check in your mobile if the, they are, it is correct, if you want. <laughs> okay, now you can check. Okay. <laughs> okay, just the conclusions. Financial literacy has been identified as one of priority issues in Europe, it is necessary to prepare young adults to face the challenges of a modern society. Um, and after struggling with indebtedness some years ago, society needs to look now to the young generation and to educate them in order to avoid um, these problems. Society has realized now that education is the key, so we need to equip citizens with the necessary tools to face these future challenges. And the IFINLEAD project addresses these challenges by providing for free um, the necessary education. So modules will be developed and they will be provided by, uh, via an online platform for all those interested uh, in improving their financial education skills.